This is how Sequoia should have looked from the factory. Stop it. We're not saying that on camera. Today is going to be an exciting day. Operation Wood Grain Delete begins. We showed you before in previous videos the interior of the 2013 Toyota Sequoia, and I hated it. It just didn't have a theme. It was so dumb. You can see in some of the previous footage, some of the knobs are silver, some of the knobs are black. Um, there's fake wood grain everywhere. I just don't like the interior of this car. Uh, I like the car, don't get me wrong. Uh, I just don't like the interior. And um, instead of buying a car that had a different interior or a different year Sequoia, which really wasn't in our budget or wasn't available to us, today we're gonna go ahead and change all the things I don't like about the interior and more. We already kind of matched up the buttons to make everything nice and black in here. We put in a new head unit, super easy, Trail Grid Pro. Um, and the best part about that head unit is, that's our sonar turning on. She should fire right up. Oh, hello. And she has a factory backup camera. Hello! That is so good. It's kind of hard to see with all the glare in here, but there's a backup camera there. It also has CarPlay. It also has a radio tuner that doesn't seem to work, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, HDMI. You can put in your own input in here and watch whatever movies you want. We really love it. And uh, one thing I was complaining about when we first got the Sequoia is my arm couldn't reach the radio. Now my arm reaches because this comes out of the dash. So I'm really stoked on the Trail Grid, Trail Grid Pro Sony upgrade. Now it's time to make everything else in here match. Um, we also got rid of the wood grain here uh, on the shifter, which I thought was super cheese balls. And so we're gonna get rid of the wood grain on the door panels and the wood grain on the steering wheel. It's the small things that really make the interior of a car pop. And this being muted down a little bit more is gonna make the interior of this car really feel a lot more modern and a lot more sporty. First and foremost, since we're gonna be disconnecting sensors and some critical sensors, you gotta make sure you pull your battery. And that's the negative terminal there. It looks like a 10 mil. It's pretty on, on there pretty tight, so I'll be pulling that right now. Not a 10 mil. Not a 12 mil. We're at a 13 mil because sometimes bolts are funny and it's a 13 mil. Great. Cool. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to try and get off the factory steering wheel. I bought a brand new one that doesn't have wood grain and it should fit, should bolt up. If it doesn't, it's fine. But in all, the only way we can tell is if by me getting off the factory one. And most steering wheels have access panels that release to like uh, star bolts. And so I think this is a big access panel here and there's one on the other side. So let's see if we can pry this off. Wow, that was really fast. But the other side, pry it off. Hey, easy peasy. All right, you can see the Torx bolt right in there and I'm willing to bet that's a T50 Torx bolt, we'll see. Did I say T50? I meant T30. It's a T30 Torx bolt in there. And when you remove the two Torx bolts, that's gonna allow the airbag thing to come forward. Of course, the battery's pulled, so nothing will spark and arc and blow up in my face. Get the other side done. There we go. Okay, she's out. All right, we pulled the airbag forward and safety equipment always has built-in redundancies. These things won't just pull off no matter what you do. These are releases on the back here that you have to pull off with a flathead and that should allow this to wiggle out. Obviously this is positive and negative and you don't want these to arc, so good thing you disconnected the battery. Once you pull that out, then you should be able to pull the airbag off completely. That wasn't, that's it, all right. And then the last thing you have to remove is the horn button. Obviously the battery is disconnected, otherwise it, this would be honking like crazy. There's a tab that holds it on. You push down with your flathead and that should allow me to wiggle it off. Done. All right, so the actual airbag itself is now off. Ooh, loaded. Now in order to get the rest of the steering wheel off, you know that there's a nut here that pulls forward, but then there's a bunch of connectors here. 
and um, I want to get these connectors off and I know that there's a screw there I don't know if there's a screw on the inside I would assume there would be to make sure it's tight and so I'm gonna start pulling these screws and see if I can get this off and then I can go compare the steering wheel that I got to make sure everything matches up screw number one is out I don't want to lose these so let's see if it that on the door and pop that out there we go easy cool goes in there so that should be free I don't there we go it's gone no more cruise control now we're gonna move over to the radio Let's see if we can get this one off that should be the same as this one obviously that oh that just pulls off just like that so that's off. Let's see if this one pulls right off. Yeah, it does. Great. Off. Okay. So we've taken everything off the steering wheel. Now is a good time to go grab the steering wheel. I have to make sure all the holes line up because I would hate to take this off and go any further than this if I got the wrong steering wheel. So let's go double check. Here is what we're going to replace it with. You can see the difference. Jet black, baby, compared to this fake wood grain nonsense. Also, the leather's perforated with a little bit higher end leather. It's brand new, it's not weathered like this. And so far, all the holes match up. So I'm really stoked on this, and we can continue with the steering wheel removal. In order to take off the factory steering wheel, you have to release this main nut here. And it's a 19. Lots of times I've had great luck with zipping this off with my Milwaukee Impact. Put it on the highest setting it can go on, and usually it just pops it right off. We'll see what happens. Boom. All right, easy. Now, in order to get this off, some people pull, pull, pull when they're in the driver's seat and end up hitting themselves in the face. I'm not gonna do that. You can really give it a lot of play. Don't wanna lose this guy. There we go. If you, um, if you hammer at it on both sides, and by doing so, it kind of breaks the seal loose. And I don't wanna break anything, of course, but just giving it a little, see it kind of vibrates it and then you should be able to wiggle it back and forth. So I'm gonna do that for a while before I punch myself in the face with the steering wheel. You just gotta get it at the right angle. Got it. All I did, and she screams. Now, it's not as simple as putting on the other steering wheel. All this plastic needs to transfer over. So let's go ahead and move over to the workbench and see if we can do that. Since we have our seats flat on the Sequoia, what better workbench than using the own car? There's like plastic bits here that needed to get transfer over. Um, and it really just like these two things that hold on these bolts and then the back piece. So let's see how the back piece comes off. Obviously there's two Phillips here and I think that's it. I don't see any other Phillips. So let's pop those off and see if we can just uh, switch her over. Make sure she's nice and level. On pretty dang easily, actually. That popped on really easily. There's a little bit of a bind here on this T30, but there we go. Got that in. Everything snapped in. It's all flush in there. We can throw in the, the two screws. The back plastic cover back on this wheel. That's gonna go on eBay. Bye bye. It's already looking so much better and it feels good too. So let's go ahead and move this back over to the steering column. And this goes through here. I don't want that rotating too much. That should kind of find its groove. Looks like it's straight now. Hey, all right. Cool. Awesome. Now is a good time to clean these two if you have like a cleaning brush you can get in between. But these look pretty clean, so we're gonna pop these back on. There we go. Should just pop in. Excuse the screaming kids. I live in a neighborhood with loud kids. The cool thing is with these is they give you kind of a they give you kind of a guide on where to put the um, 
the controllers. You can see that big hole there. You kind of feed it through that hole. And then you got to feel it with your hand to put it back on. You can feel which way it wants to start and then it kind of pops in place. Obviously this is a little off. And I think that's because I missed the bottom hole here. There we go. Now we're in and boom, nice and tight and aligned with the screw holes on both sides. This one probably needs to go in a little bit more. There we go. All right, this can plug back in. And then we need to get our cruise control back in. That goes over like that. There's a nice little tab that keeps it in place. Boom. And then this should pop in like so. Okay. So everything is nice and tidy. Let's go ahead and put the screw back in for the cruise control. It looks like there's two screws that I'm missing. Plug these back in and I think we're ready to pop the airbag back on. Make sure they're not coming out and airbag is in. Everything's connected. Oh, let's put these wire, tuck these wires back in the little guys they came out of. I could, probably could have done that earlier, but okay. And let's see if we can throw this back in place without scratching anything. Airbag works, horn works. We can take this off. Time to put on these things that popped off. There we go. Big old head in the way. Sorry, guys. Woohoo! All right. Look at that. Oh, looks so much better. And the wood and the leather is nice and new. She has lots of air. We have lots of areas to grab the wheel. This looks fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. Next up are these, and this is pretty simple. I'm just gonna use. Um, interior puller to pop up this panel. There's two clips in here and I got extra clips just in case. Get extra clips just in case. And then uh, we'll, we'll pop this out. All right, that was easy. Get the front up. All right. Gonna pop out. You have two options here. You can pull the clip and unplug everything or you can literally just unscrew it from the the plastic itself and that's what I'm gonna do and that way the clip stays on the switch still works if I need to drive somewhere I can I didn't disable my entire window here and so super simple just two three Phillips one two three and this entire unit will come off right, once you unbolt those three screws one two three it literally does just come right off and uh, this should be pretty fun to wrap obviously the uh, black area here is not gonna get wrapped because um, I need to trim that with a razor blade. And I like it being black for your fingers. I don't want wrap in there, but all this will get wrapped and then we'll just trim around this. So let's move this on over. Actually, let's go remove the passenger side and do the two fronts at the same time. Now the passenger side doesn't have a window switch that screws in. These all kind of snap in. You can see the tabs here. And uh, the way you're gonna attack this is pop in a flathead in there and get one side and pry it and then try and get the back side. Um, so you do this and then try and get that and that way it'll come right out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now It was super simple to remove pro tip when you shove your flathead in there to pull it forward Don't push too hard. You could totally break the plastic I was right at the limit of breaking it. So just go easy and you'll have a nice clean panel I'm a little wrap station Presser card a little hard edge the front two pieces heat gun vinyl and the razor work your magic, babe <laughs> just finished wrapping this and we went with a carbon wrap because one the textured carbon won't show up with a lot of scratches so we're gonna be off-roading with this and two it matches all the different tones of grays and black in the car so now all we got to do is put it back in the door and I am so freaking stoked she did an amazing job with this oh it looks so good let's screw this back in <laughs> Find the clips where they go and 
done deal. Oh, that looks so freaking good. This truck looks renewed. It looks like a brand new truck. Oh, I'm so happy. This looks amazing. All right, I finished one side because uh, Emily does much better work than me, but I wanted to see if I could do one. And mine doesn't look as good as hers does, but let's pop this in the car and see what it looks like. So I had a logo in the front. Pop it in, make sure it's right. Done, snap, snap. And let's move on over to the door. And the yellow tabs. Done deal. Oh, perfect. Now let's go up front and see the fruits of our labor. Got everything installed, now it's time for the big reveal. <laughs> it looks so nice. Isn't it nice? Oh, and the leather is so much better than the leather was on the old one. This is how Sequoia should have looked from the factory. We are so stoked to have done this. The leather on this is super nice. If you guys are interested in getting any of these parts, I'll drop some links below, but just so you know, uh, the vinyl was off Amazon, it was 12 bucks. Door handles are off AJT Design. The black piano black wood steering wheel was off eBay. Uh, this carbon fiber cover was also off eBay. These are all AJT Design. This is Trail Grid Pro, uh, full kit with matte black. I did not do shiny, I did matte because I like the matte. And then following over to the other side is the same. So um, Amazon and then AJT Design. But this is exactly how the rig should look. I still hate these freaking portal holes more than anything, but this looks a whole lot better than what it looked like before. Thanks so much for watching. We are so stoked to uh, actually make some changes on the Sequoia. As you can see, there's a little bit of a lift situation going on behind me. That'll be our next episode. You'll see the ins and outs of how to put a lift kit on a Sequoia. Pro tip, the front is the same as the Tundra, the rear is not. You need something funky, and we've got that something funky, so we'll throw that in that episode. Shout out to Tandem Off-Road for getting that for us. And uh, now it's time to take this bad boy for a cruise and have a good time. We'll see you guys on the next one. Drop us a comment, ask any question you want, and we are here to answer them. Uh, Operation Wood Grain Delete is a smashing success, and we are stoked to have our Platinum Edition Sequoia with no bullshit wood grain.